saw in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. The thoughts have lifted up, O Lord, they've lifted up their voice. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. God. Trust everybody's doing well today. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today is um, April the 3rd, 2022. Amen. And uh, we're here. I'm going to come at you with the live Facebook. Amen. And um, I just want to welcome everyone that's listening and that will listen. Amen. And uh, I'm very excited about today's lesson. We're going to be talking about helps in governments and what that means in the body of Christ. 
and um, like I said, I'm very excited about it. You know, as as it is, <clears throat> you know, we we really haven't heard this kingdom message, hey, Amen. This the the kingdom that Jesus said, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, right? Thy will be done." Well, we really don't understand that, right? In the body of Christ, and you know, we 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 think we know who Jesus is, and we think we know what He had in mind when He, what the Father had in mind when He came and and brought His work to the Lord and brought the kingdom of God to the earth, Amen. But Jesus was looking to establish the lordship of who He is in our hearts first. It's the order of first things, right? You have a king and you have dominion, kingdom, kingdom of a dominion. Well, He needs to tackle this land first, you and me as brothers and sisters in the Lord, Amen. And once he that's established in our lives, once we have a desire for obedience, amen, sonship has been built up in our hearts. And our only desire, like I said, the way, the, the will of God is the word of God, which brings the way of God, which, teach, which brings us into the work of God. So once we have established this way, will, word, and work, amen, in our hearts and lives, and then as, as, as you know, in that process, you're, you're being prepared to be ready, amen. Be ready to eventually be sent out because you're sealed. You're sealed in that, you know, nobody can take away that, that who Jesus Christ is in your heart anymore. Amen. And no matter what the, the enemy tries to bring to your life, you always stand back on the word. Amen. All right. So before I get any further here, amen, let's go ahead and pray. Amen. Today is, um, today is, uh, April the 3rd, 2022, and of course it's Sunday. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this precious day, Father God. I, pray, I thank you for this precious time, and I thank you for the stone of who Jesus Christ in our, is in our lives, amen. And I thank you, your desire, Father God, is to teach us your ways here on earth as it is in heaven, amen. There is a way of God, amen. As the scripture says, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Well, Lord, we've been trying it all this time to doing it the way of man. Now we desire, Lord, to do it your way, to do it the way of Christ. Amen. A king of a dominion, Father God, a king of our kings of our hearts. Amen. Not only is our Savior who saved us from this world and from the enemy, from the wicked one, but now also, Lord God, turned around and, and now, Lord God, placed in your kingdom, Father, to do your will. And I thank you, Father God, for this time. I thank you for those that are partaking and that will partake, Father, and I bless you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, as I was saying, you know, many think they understand, you know, what, what the Lord had in mind when he said, I will build my church, right? And you've got a lot of views on that. You know, Catholicism says that Jesus was talking about Peter, and, and he was, but not only Peter, amen, because God knows the ways of theocracy. Of course, he is God. He's the one, the government comes from God, amen, this, this theocratic government system. But like I said, in the body of Christ, we haven't heard that. We've heard, you know, uh, certain denominations, all they do is believe in salvation. We've got other denominations that believe in salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right? Oh, man. And, uh, and like I said, we have all these organizations that have, uh, you know, think they understand what God is trying to do in the earth, right? And as Jesus said, you know, go into all the earth and make disciples. He didn't say just get them born again. He talked about making disciples, training and teaching them. And that requires a lot of work and a lot of time with people. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway. Um, all right. So let me let me look at some of my notes here. So one of the scriptures that I want to highlight on, first of all, is that we have to understand something about God's word is Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away, right? All right, so that's John 24, 35. I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew 24, 35. All right. Matthew 24, 35. And I want to look at something in that verse, Matthew 24, 35. I mean, it's, it's the very Lord Jesus who said this, right? Matthew 25. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, my logos, shall not pass away. All right? And that tells us something about God's word. That, as the scripture says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. So we've got a word that never decays and never dissolves and never goes away. You see? So 
with that, uh, man's ways, right? Man's and what man has tried to do with, with the Lord Jesus, all of it is, is basically a failure, right? Because it wasn't built on the right foundation, the foundation being Christ, amen? All right, so now look at this verse in 1 Peter 1.25. He said, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So in other words, the word that's coming at you, that's being preached to you, that's being taught to you, is the word that endures forever. All right? So how can we say that Jesus Christ, you know, put away, did away with the word of God is no longer for today as far as it was back then? Right? You got individuals that don't believe in the laying out of hands, casting out devils, raising the dead, right? Making the deaf to hear, that blind eyes to see, and so on, making the withered hands straight. You know, we got all these people that don't believe in that, right? We got a whole group of, of an organization, all they believe that Jesus is their Savior, right? But the Word of God teaches clearly God's Word endures forever, and this is the Word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now, in the message translation, that verse goes like this. First Peter 1.25, God's message goes on and on forever. This is the word that conceived the new life in you. See, the very word of God that caused you to be born again is this eternal word, this eternal message. God never desired for us to not have his fullness, right? In John 3.34, it says, For he whom God hath sent speaketh the rhemas or the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure. So, <clears throat> in, in mind in your life, knowing that we got born again by faith and when we heard that message of the kingdom of God, amen, because that is the message. It's God's message. It came from God. It originated from God. Knowing that, <clears throat> that we were born again of incorruptible seed, right? Well, when you got born again, you didn't just get a portion of God, a small piece. You got God in his fullness living in your spirit, right? Because as the scripture says, God giveth not the spirit by measure. Well, now we're talking about Christ here, but it's the same thing with us. Do you think God only gave you a small part of himself to you? No, you have divine nature living in your spirit, man. Glory to God, abiding in your spirit, man. And that divine nature constantly is, is, is leading and guiding us, right? As the scripture says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the rhemas of God, those spoken words that God ministered to you out of your spirit, man, that word of God gives you faith, amen, towards God to continue to live on in faith and trust towards God in whatever circumstance or situation that you're encountering in life. Now, <clears throat> listen to this uh, same verse, 1 first, first Peter one twenty five, but this is in the Amplified. It says, but the word of the Lord, the divine instruction, glory to God, the gospel endures forever and this word is the good news which was preached unto you and which continues to be preached unto you because as the scripture says he whom god has sent speaks the rhemas of god is continually speaking the word of god the life of god now the question is is that are we hearing the right voice right are we hearing the voice of the kingdom are we hearing the voice that comes from those that god has sent well you know I say no, we're not, because we got individuals out there that are still struggling. And as Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, why do they prevail? If he said the edifice that I'm going to stand up, structure and build is not going to fall and the, key, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right. So. <clears throat> as it says again, in John 334 in the Amplified, he says that for since he whom God has sent, speaks the rhemas of God, proclaims God's own message. Amen. That voice of God, that message of God, Jesus said, change your lives. God's kingdom is here. That same voice. Amen. Because in the changing of your lives, you're turning unto the Lord. Amen. And the Lord has an inheritance, a purpose for every one of us, a purpose in God. Amen. Oh, man. I meet, I meet people all the time, right? And I met this young lady, and I started sharing with her about the website, divinefavor.org, right? And she says, well, what's on there? And I said, well, the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom, the message, the good news that was preached, amen, that has continued to be preached. And I encouraged her, you know, I let her know she's got a purpose in God, and how can you understand your purpose if you don't understand your origin, right? You have to know where you came from. And we did not come from, you know, 
uh, monkeys or an ape, because you can ask an ape, why did you make me? But you can ask God, is what I said to her. And she says, I like that. It gave her some hope, amen. And uh, and anyway, the point is, is that <clears throat> those that will, God is sending speak God's words, amen. And they have something from God for you, but you have to understand the ways of God. Now, Jesus said, I will build my church, right? Whose church did he say he's going to build? Did he say he's going to build organizations that only believe in me as a Savior? Organizations that only believe in me in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and as a Savior? Only the organizations that believe in the cow? You know, you got you got organizations, religious organizations, that their God is a cow, you know? I can understand why there's so much confusion about who mankind is because they don't even understand what they worship. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians, and Jesus, Jesus said it's too to the woman at the well. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. We know that we what who our God is. But when you do not know and understand who your God is, as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 2, you know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols even as you were led. See, dumb idols are keep us dumb in the ways of God, right? When we find out the way of God and the order of God, and all of a sudden our lives become aligned with the eternal purpose of God, with the eternal word of God, amen? The word that is life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh, amen? This word of God, amen, begins to realign our lives because our thinking starts getting changed to the way God thinks. We start understanding on earth as it is in heaven. We start understanding on earth, me as a son of God, you out there in the body of Christ, sons and daughters of God, begin to understand what God meant when he said, what Jesus meant when he said, on earth as it is in heaven, thy kingdom come. The king of a domain, this domain, and what he's after is your heart. Now, once he gets your heart, he has my heart. Once he gets another brother and sister and so on and so on and so on, all of a sudden, the body of Christ begins to understand what it means to be led of the Spirit and on, on the corporate basis. Now, in Matthew 16, 13, <clears throat> Jesus said, actually, let's just read it. It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? All right. So people were asking, he asked, who are the people saying that I am? And Jesus said, and some said, some said, some said that thou art John the Baptist, Elias, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Another translation says, you know, one that was raised from the dead. All right. Now, <clears throat> it's very interesting that, you know, the way they viewed him, they saw him as somebody like John the Baptist because he preached that word, amen, with no fear of man, amen. He did the work of God. He was baptizing, so on, so on. Elias, of course, we know what Elijah did, right? All the miracles that Elijah did. So they saw a lot of miracles. So they, they related Elias as Jesus. And then others, Jeremiah, because again, Jeremiah was a prophet that was rooting out, pulling down, throwing down, and destroying. Then he was building and planting, right? The way of God. See, I can't, as Paul said, he said, I can't build on another man's foundation. That's Romans 15, 20. Let's take a look at that. Romans 15, 20, amen. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. See, Paul understood some things here that I can't build on another man's foundation. I can't build, all right, in the place where other men have, other men have been building because I don't know what they've been building. I don't know what tools they were using. I don't know what what uh, supplies they were using. I don't know if they were using the Word of God in the world and their, their mixture and their message, right? The mix, message being all mixed up, all right? I don't know. So therefore, I've got to, like I said, like like Jeremiah, root out, pull down, throw down, and destroy. He knew that if, if he was going to start another work, a foundation in Christ, he would have to tear everything down first, all right? And so, so back to, you know, what Jesus said, you know, who do men say that I, the son of man? Well, some said, you know, uh, Elias, Jeremiah, or the prophet. But he said unto them, who do you say that I am? 
And that's the question that every man, every woman of God has to answer. Who do you say that I am? You see, if you say that he's only your savior, okay, well, you know, you're, you're coming up short in what God has for you in your inheritance. If you say that God is, that Jesus is, you know, the one, you know, my savior and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, well, that's it for you. you. You're not realizing the fullness of God. But there are others, amen, that only want the will of God, amen, only want the word of God, and they want it in the way of God, and they want to be able to come into their work, because all of us, incidentally, are called by God. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, take a look at this, amen. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, all of us have been called by God, all of us, amen. You don't have to wait to figure out that the Lord's called me to be a preacher. And what's funny is a lot of these brothers and sisters, they, they feel like God's got a call on their lives. Well, then they go to seminary and then they think they're ready. <laughs> well, how, how ridiculous is that, right? <laughs> because Jesus, he was 30 years old when he stepped into what God had for him. Amen? And so we can't assume that, you know, just because we, we're doing it the way of the world, we get called, we go to a seminary, and then all of a sudden we're ready. No, that's not how it works in the kingdom of God. Amen. You've got to be proven. You've got to be tried. I mean, just like Jesus, this cornerstone was tried. So it says, and, and, and Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, right? So Simon Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was. Amen. He wasn't just a, somebody that saved me. He wasn't just somebody that baptized me in the Holy Ghost. He wasn't just somebody that healed me and delivered me and set me free. But he's my Lord. Amen. Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God, the we us of God, the very one that came from God. Amen? So, again, uh, he asked him this question, and Peter revealed that he's the Christ. Well, Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. You can't get the revelation of who Christ is from flesh and blood. You've got to hear it by the Spirit. Amen? Jesus is the Lord, and he's the Savior of my life. And as the Lord of my life, his word dictates to me how I conduct myself, how I live myself in my domestics, my home, how I conduct myself in the body of Christ, how I conduct myself out there in the world, what type of music I'm listening to, what kind of movies I'm watching, what am I giving myself to, amen? You see, God's word tells me these things. And as the scripture tells us very clearly, you know, some said he's a prophet, some Jeremiah, one of the prophets, or, you know, one of the uh, prophets, you know, but he said, he said, who do you say that I am, right? Now, uh, there's another scripture here. Well, actually, well, it's in Jer. I mean, it's in Peter. It says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Amen? Now, the scripture teaches us very clearly, I think it's in Peter again as well, is that seeing you have, a, oh, seeing you have pu purified your souls through obeying the truth. Well, that's how our soul gets saved. By the way, when you get born again, it's not your soul that gets saved. It's your spirit, man, that receives the life of God, the fullness of God. It's your soul that has to be trained in the ways of God. Your mind, your will, and your emotion has to be dealt with by the Lord. Amen? And so, <clears throat> again, there, there's a lot of... There's a lot of uh, individuals that you know they have an opinion of jesus christ i remember one individual i was talking to and he says yeah i believe in jesus i believe in the bible i believe all the good things that the bible has well i shared with them a scripture about how paul saw that they were worshiping in on mars hill the god of the unknown and he says i'm going to make known to you who this god of you know who this unknown god is and that you worship ignorantly he said and when i quoted that verse to this brother to this individual he said I'm not ignorant. <laughs> Missing the whole point, right? Who Jesus is, amen? Who is God? Who is the Lord to you? Well, like I said, there's many that, that have a, uh, a, a, a strange ideas of who the Lord is, amen? All right. Now, one thing about this, this, this Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm, I'm sharing all this to stage us up and get ready for the lesson that we're going to get in today, Helps in Governments, which, which it's a... a very, very, very um, 
misunderstood, all right, the way of God and what he meant when uh, in his desire and structure in the body of Christ and so on, all right? So, <clears throat> so if we look at Psalm 118, verse 22, it says, the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. Now, back in the day of Christ, when he was on the earth, do you think, I'm going to ask a question, do you think there were many that rejected Jesus, that rejected the stone? And pitched it aside and said, no, we can't use this. They couldn't use it because the message that Jesus was bringing, bringing to them is, I've got to root out, pull down, throw it down, destroy it. All your philosophies and views and your ideas of what you think the Torah was about. Because Jesus told them, you, you search the scriptures and you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. You're only going to get God's life, the eternal life of God, the Zoe of God, not in a fire, fire escape policy. Being born again wasn't something that... Um, we receive so that we won't go to hell. God was trying to teach us and show us about an inheritance that he has for us. Every one of us, amen. And, and God can't bless me in the inheritance, inheritance that he's given you. You've got to step into this for yourself. You've got to begin to establish the Lordship of Christ in your life by obeying God's word. I can't do that for you. And in doing so, more of God is revealed, more of Christ is revealed, that reminds me of a scripture. This is 2 Chronicles. I want to read this to you. Now, God brought me a word through this passage. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. And the Spirit of God came on Azariah, okay? The son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me. Hear the voice of the Lord, amen. Asa and Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Amen. Now, for a long time, Israel had been without a true, the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Amen. And, and God brought me a word through that, Joseph. He said, Joseph, if you seek me, you'll find me. And I know we, 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 we understand that on an elementary level, but I'm talking about every time we need God, he's going to be there for us. But God's purpose, as it says here now, for a season Israel had, had been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. God wants you to learn his ways. And you're going to get the will of God, the word of God, the way of God, the work of God, if you begin to come under God's ordered arrangement of what he's purposed in bringing you into the ways of God. And you can't do that if you're not getting taught these ways. Preaching is great. Amen. I, I preach. Amen. I teach. But when I'm teaching the word of God, God has a purpose and he's laying this foundation. Amen. This word that cannot be taken away from your hearts and from your lives. But you also have to do your part and you have to meditate and you have to study and you have to get into this word on your own. I can't do that for you. I can't step into the inheritance of God for you. I'm going to give you what God has given me, and you've got to take that and run with it by faith. As God quickens your heart, quickens your spirit. Now, <clears throat> all right. So we've all been made partakers of this heavenly calling. Amen. So now, and, and Peter when Jesus said, I, I will build my church, all right, and the gates of hell will not prevail, he was talking about himself. He was the stone that the builders rejected. Now, we we hear that, and like I said, you know, there's organizations that believe Peter was the first one, and they're gonna everything was built on Peter. Well, that's not true. It was Jesus is the chief cornerstone, as the Bible teaches us. And one thing that's easy to understand is that if you interpret the Word of God with the Word of God, you're always going to be clear about what you're hearing and what you're being taught. But 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 when mankind starts getting off on, on the deep end, like like I said, Peter was the first, and therefore we're going to build on Peter. That's not what Jesus was saying. It's not against Peter that the gates of hell are going to prevail. Now, um, <clears throat> he says, he says uh, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. When man builds it, it's going to easily, uh, the enemy is easily going to prevail. And remember, in the Mount of Transfiguration, right? Peter said, you know, we're going to build three tabernacles, one for Elias, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. But God came in his voice and says, 
This is my beloved son, hear ye him. You're hearing the wrong voice, Peter. You see, and those that have, like I said, that have, have, have went off on the deep end and, and built this enormous, enormous structure, right, <laughs> in the earth, and all founded on Peter, if you will. But Jesus said, don't hear anything else. God said, don't hear anything else. You need to hear the son. Amen. That is the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected now. And Jesus, like I said, he was talking about himself prophetically. Amen. Now, uh, let me come on here. And I want to read this now. Jesus even quoted this in Mark chapter 10, 12, verse 10. He says, have you not even read the passage of scripture? The very stone which after putting it to the test, the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, the cornerstone. You see, Jesus is the foundation. He is everything that we build on is on Christ or it should be. If it's not, guess what? It's going to be burned away. Because you're building with the wrong tools. You're building with the wrong materials. You're building with materials that are that are uh, going to perish. All right. Now, verse 6, it says, For thus it stands in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chosen, honored, precious, chief cornerstone, and he who believes in him, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, shall never be disappointed or put to shame. Amen. And here, Zion, is it represents the figuratively the church, militant. It says, or triumphant, but it should be militant and triumphant. Triumphant and, and militant over what? Well, militant over the demonic realm, right? Kings and priests, Melech, Zedek, kings that dominate in righteousness, amen? The right way of God. And it's clear to see that because later on you see in the scripture says, same, same passage here that Jesus says, you are a royal priesthood. We're a kingly priesthood, amen? And we dominate in the spirit. Now, the Babylonian system talks about the stone and the kingdom, but as it says in 1 Peter 1 8, because they disobey and disbelieve, it says in the scriptures that you be being 1 Peter 1 8. I'm sorry, is it 2 8? Yeah, the stone that will cause stumbling and a rock that will give men offense, they stumble because they disobey and disbelieve God's word, as those who reject him were destined and appointed to do. Now, this 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 rock, this foundation of who Christ is, right? This way of God, all right? We're going to get into that now. First of all, in Isaiah verse 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born and a son is given, right? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, was the government given to the, to the child that's born or to the son that's given? Who is able, as Jesus said, knowing that all things have been given unto me, right? Who is the one that you can build on? Can you build on children? No, right? They're heirs of God, but, but they still have to grow up, amen? You can't build on the children. You've got to build on the ones that God has raised up and matured as sons of God, mature sons. And it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You can't put a load of responsibility on children, all right? So many in the body of Christ, that's all they are, is, is young brothers and sisters that have not been fathered or trained up in the ways of God. They don't want to, they don't receive correction. They don't believe God's word. They don't want to obey God's word. They surely don't want to understand the, the, the government of God, which is theocracy. All right? Theocracy, God's form of government. Theo means God. Ocracy means government. God's way of governing. Now we see in our nation today, you know, what our governing your structure is doing out there, all right, and uh, it's it's very chaotic, <laughs> a lot of problems, right, <clears throat> so now, in verse 7, it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, you can't have peace until you have governments in our lives, now, it says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, right, so in other words, when you get born again, and all of a sudden, you start realizing who Jesus is. He's not just your Savior, right? He's your Lord. And all of a sudden, you, you, you begin to get to a place where all you want to do is obey God's word. I mean, no matter what the cost, right? All of a sudden, the increase of God's government begins to grow. 
one by one, one brother and sister that gets born again and gets established in the Lordship of Christ, all of a sudden God's kingdom begins to grow and increase. Amen? And and as a result of that, <clears throat> in other words, what, what happens because of that is that now God has an army, if you will, a militant and triumphant body of Christ because they're all understanding the way of God and they're all understanding God's form of government. Amen? And that's all they want. They want God's way. They don't want the way of man. All right? Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, how that your desire for our lives is to establish Jesus Christ in our hearts and lives in lordship. We know he's our savior. We know he delivered us, but we also need to understand who he is as our Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, that Jesus, you are the head of the church, but you are the Lord of my life. Amen. And I'm not here just to play church, glory to God. I'm here to establish your kingdom, Father God, even as the Lord Jesus, the pattern, amen, came and taught us the ways of the kingdom of God, the ways of the Father, amen. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name for, for bringing us your word, Father, for bringing us your spirit, Father. And I pray that you would work this in the lives of those that are partaking, Father. And I bless you for this in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, we're going to get started here with the lesson, and we'll get as far as we can, but that's okay. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Very uh, revealing verse, once again. He says here, Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. All right? Unique members, right? Not all the same. <laughs> and God has set some in the church... All right, first apostles. When you hear the word first, body of Christ, it, it, it means something. You've got to do it this way first. You can't do it another way first and then expect God to bless it. See, the gates of hell are going to prevail against that foundation. It's the wrong foundation. It's the foundation that's built on sand. It wasn't built on Christ. So first apostles, in an apostolic term, order of first things, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles which is the word dunamis and then gifts charismas of healings helps governments diversities of tongues all right now the word helps here is a greek word antilepsis before i continue let me go ahead and copy that uh so there's the outline so again helps is the word antilepsis all right anti means to stand against or oppose and then lambonameo is means to take hold of, it comes from the word to lay, take hold of or lay hold of, of any person or thing in order to use it. So anti taking hold helps is that word. Now let's look at the word governments. Governments is the word kubernesis, which means to steer, to pilot the directorship in the church, the governing or the government of the fellowship. Now, these two words all right, tell us a lot of things. Anti, they, the one that helps is anti-taking over. Uh, in other words, anti-taking the government. The other, the governments is those that are piloting and directing the body of Christ, as Jesus is the head of the church. Now, going back to verse 28 here, the, the beginning part of it, he says, God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. All right? And what's interesting about that, he didn't mention shepherd there, or appointment, or as we know it today as a pastor. Only one time was that word used as pastor in the New Testament, and it's made a mess of things. So, first apostles, second early prophets, third teachers, all right? Now, I've shared in the prior videos in the Concerning Spirituals or Pneumatical series about what these are, apostles, prophets, teachers are here called our domas, doma gift. Doma means to make a gift of a gift, okay? Now, <clears throat> but he said first apostles, second prophets, third teachers. Well, if you if you take a look at the body of Christ and the fellowships that are out there, uh, I mean, do we see that? There's only one place that I know of where I see every bit of this. Apostles, prophets, teachers, all right? Miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Only one fellowship that I have ever seen that at. And it was funny because I remember growing up in the Lord, right? And I was always moving around because I was looking for those that were obedient to God's word and those that wanted to do it the way of God. 
And I never could find that, all right, until I moved to to Marshall. And uh, I remember hearing messages that Brother Randy had shared back in the day, you know, the Zion series, the Marismos, and all these, these, these words had so much life on them. And they caused a desire and a hunger in my heart that, that first of all, they, 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 they confirmed the hope that there was something better, right? As the scripture says about Abram, Abraham, that he searched for a city whose builder and maker is God. He was looking for the foundation of God. He didn't want the foundation of man, right? Because we see what the foundation that's been built on mankind, the way he thinks it should be done, we see the results of that. And look at our society, right? Poverty, sickness, disease, prostitution, drug abuse, drug distribution, right? We see all this, right? Murders. We see abortions. We see, you know, people getting killed for no, no apparent reason. This is all demonic, right? And we know the principle, <clears throat> John 10, 10, 10, the thief, kept not, the thief cometh not before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What's he killing, stealing, and destroy? Sure, he's killing, destroying, and stealing from mankind, but he's taking the word from our lives. Amen? Because once you understand the truth of the Jesus, who Jesus Christ is, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, once you begin to follow and pursue after the rock, Jesus, all of a sudden, man, your faith has been built toward God. Amen? All of a sudden, you start understanding the way of God. You're learning the ways of God. All of a sudden, the word that the enemy took from you, you're taking it back. Amen. For the violent, take it by force. You've got to be violent in your pursuit of God. If you seek the Lord, he will be found of you. Amen. And that's what I want and desire for my life and my family. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, said Jesus. All right? Now, <clears throat> So anti-lepsis, he's the one that doesn't want to take the politage. But the governments of, who, of whom God has given that grace to, the elder rule, which they were always elders in the Bible, the government of God was always elder rule. Jesus came and set up the 12. Amen. Moses had to set up set up over them 50s, 100s, 1000s, and 10s. It's called the Jethro Principle, right? And uh, <clears throat> so it wasn't about <clears throat> who can do it better. It was always about the order of God. Who did God bring up first? He brought the male up first. Amen. He didn't, he didn't, he's not trying to discriminate on anybody, on women and so on. God brought the government to the male. Amen. First. He's the one that came out first. He's the one, as the scripture says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Well, the male has got to stand in front of that. All right. We'll get into that in a little while later, but let's go ahead and talk about who the helps are and who the governments are. Okay. Okay, so the helps were always the deacons. Let's look at 1 Timothy 3 8. 1 Timothy 3 8. And by the word, that word deacon is the same word minister. All right. And it's the word diaconia. All right. And verse 8 here in 1 Peter, 1 Timothy 3 8, it says, Likewise, the deacons must be. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. Okay. All right. Praise God. He says here, <clears throat> holding the mystery of the faith of, of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also first be proven. Then let them use the office of a deacon. Office of a deacon, that, all that whole phrase is one Greek word, and it means diakonia, which means to be a servant, an attendant, to serve on, to wait on. That's what the deacon ministry is all about, the, the service of helping the body of Christ, helping those that are in leadership, the elder rule, and so on, to be an attendant to wait on, all right? Now, that doesn't mean that, that a deacon doesn't know the word of God. That doesn't mean that a deacon... Like I said, uh, is not able to bring miracles and gifts of healing and so on. You see, because in this in this way of God, this order of Melchizedek, it was an eternal priesthood, amen. A priesthood that never dies, that brings the peace of God everywhere they go. They bring the dominion, the rule of God. They're able to teach, amen. As as we go on here, and let these also first verse ten be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon. Then let them do their service or their ministry 
their deacon service and being found blameless. Now, when I look, well, we're going to get into the definitions of these, some of these words. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanders, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Not two, three, four, five wives. Not, not uh, as it says, uh, let's see, how does it say it? The first lady or whatever. No, there's only one lady, glory to God, my wife. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own households as well. For they that have used the akinia, all right, ministering, being able to serve and so on, and not taking apologies, well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Great boldness, man. These guys are bold. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto you shortly. All right. So, in looking at all these these uh, words that he said, let let them first be proved. All right. Now, proven in verse ten. All right. Blameless wives must be grave. Amen. That's going to be in verse uh, verse eleven. Wives must be grave. Grave is the word august, venerable, reverend. All right, venerated or honored for their character, amen. How they conduct themselves, amen. How they know how to how to go in and come out. How they know how to represent the authority of God, amen. God's order in their lives, and uh, and then it says verse eleven again. He says, uh, <clears throat> not slanders. Well, the word slander is the word diabolos. Diabolos is 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 were one of the definitions for the word Satan, or one of the words for the word Satan, which means slanderous, always accusing falsely, you see. No proof, no nothing, just making statements just out of, out of the blue, right? And that's what the enemy does. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He stands before God accusing the brethren, you see. And that's why when we get corrected and we get confronted by the Lord, amen, we have to receive the correction because if not, the one that is your advocate, which is the Holy Ghost, you see, is not able to stand up for you because you're taking your own case. If you seek to save your life, your suke, your soul, you're going to lose it. But if you seek to lose it, we've got another one that's going to stand up and represent you. And that's what I want. I don't want to represent myself, right? All right. All right, so not diabolos, sober. All right, so uh, sober here is a word that means uh, temperate, abstaining from wine, either entirely or at least from its moderate, immoderate use. In other words, circumspect. Amen. No reason to point the finger, amen, at any member of that brother or sister, uh, bro brother's family. Excuse me. And so, <clears throat> faithful in all things, amen. And then in verse 12, he says, the husband of one wife, all right? Now, Paul puts it, put this in here, but I know it's, it's, order, it's God's order for, for the help meet, which is what, he's, what, what he made, the wife. He says, Adam, I'm going to make you help meet. Somebody's going to help you. Well, what does that say about the disposition, the character of, of, of the sister in the Lord? She can help, all right? She can do this ministry of deacon as well. But... Um, but this place is where you've got this doctrine of the Nicolaitans is what Jesus called in Revelation. Nico, Nico means victorious over, and laity is the people, victorious over the people. So you, we, we have all these things that have crept into the body of Christ like, uh, like uh, titles, right? And Job very clearly states this now. Job chapter, I think it's 32, 22, let me look. Yeah. Let me not, verse 21, chapter 32, verse 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker will soon take me away. <clears throat> you see, when we put these titles in our, in our lives, like bishop this, or apostle this, or prophet that, or teacher this, or pastor this, or, you know, doctor apostolic prophetic teacher this whatever all right all these all these uh titles flattering titles 
What we're doing in that is that we're operating in the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaiti, over the people. All right, victorious over the people. And that's not what God wants. We are after the order of Melchizedek. Now, there is governments of God, what God set up, right? Elder rule, right? And then there is helps, right? The deacon ministries. But that doesn't mean that they're over the people in, in the sense that uh, they're to be distinguished and separated from. No, we're all one and we're all the same in Christ. We're all sons of God and daughters of God. But guess what? We all have different responsibilities, and we have to maintain in our responsibilities. Amen? So, <clears throat> uh, as it says here, grave, which means, verse 8, honest and honorable, not double-tongued, not given to wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, not holding fast the faith. Amen? Holding and maintaining God's word. Amen? The faith of God, towards God. Now, the word minister, again, it's the word... Same word, Matthew 23, 11. Look at that verse. Matthew 23, 11. But the greatest one among you shall be your servant, diakonos. Amen. In other words, it's the same word for deacon. The one that serves, the greatest one among you is the one who serves. We should all have the attitude of a servant, whether we are in governments or whether we are in helps. We need to always be willing to assist one another, help one another, supply to one another. Amen. And so, again, Mark 9, 35. Mark 9, 35. Praise God. And he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and the servant of all. So if you want to be first in the kingdom of God, you got to be last. In other words, God doesn't honor you when we're trying to be prideful, when we're trying to get up front, we're trying to get mankind to see us, we're trying to get the body of Christ to notice. Can you put me in this position? Can, can I do this? Can I do this? No, God is looking for the one that's last, the one that has a humble heart. Amen. The one that's been proven and tried. Amen. It's Jesus, the tried stone. Amen. Attitude of a servant. All right. Now. Uh, there's a, a lot of verses that use that word, but so <clears throat> again, uh, the point is, is that God is looking for servants. Amen. So, and in this verse, Romans 16, 1, I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is our diaconia of the church, which is at Sencria. All right. This sister was a deaconess. Amen. And, and so there's just a couple of verses here showing us what this ministry of a deacon is and what they do and they serve, all right? And they're opposed against anti-governments. Now, it's very clear to understand these things as far as what God has done in your heart and in your life. If you're one opposed to always taking the governments and taking the lead, well, then it's very clear that you're in the ministry of diaconia, all right? And uh, again... You know, this has been so abused and so misunderstood. You know, you've got fellowships that have deacon boards, which deacons were never meant to be in governments, all right? But again, we don't understand and we don't obey God's word. And, and we think, you know, it's funny because, like I said, we don't believe in miracles and, and raising of the dead and so on, but we'll believe in the deacon ministry. And and yes, it is a ministry, but it was in, 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 the, in the right order. It's serving and helping and assisting never taken from the Kubernetes or the governments. But in the wrong order, it's they're they're the ones that, that, that make the decisions and, and the and the where and the direction of where the fellowship is going to go. That's out of order. And the problem is is that when things are out of order, we're opening the door to the demonic realm. You see? We open the door to demons and so on. Because Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against what I build. But when man builds it, we have all kinds of demonic activity involved in the body of Christ. Sickness, disease, you know, death, premature, and so on and so on. All kinds of individuals that are that are not able to grow up in the Father's house. All right. There's a song, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sing it, you know, in my in my uh, great singing voice. It says, it's called Where Are the Fathers, right? It says, where are the fathers? 
Where are the fathers? Let's see here. Where are the fathers? I don't even remember it all. But the point is, is that in the Babylonian system, we don't have the way of God. We don't have a method for how we train and teach the sons of God and bring them up in the fatherhood of God. All right. And because of that, many don't understand their significance and their value and their premium. But in God's kingdom, glory to God, of which of whom a son is a child is born, but a son is given. The one that has been given back to the body of Christ, amen, is able to train up and raise up sons of God, bring them to maturity, making disciples, getting them to a place where they can turn around and flip and make disciples and so on. And in, and in the government of God, of his increase in government there, and peace, there shall be no end. That's exactly what happens. There's no end to the purpose of God because brothers and sisters are coming up into maturity. The body of Christ and the church was always meant to be a, a, uh, a base of operation, a base of operation to help train and teach the body of Christ in discipleship. So that they could turn around and come out and go and build and make disciples in the purpose of God. So we'll kick it off next week. We'll start talking about elder rule and what that's about and what the word of God teaches about that. And uh, thank you for partaking today. And I, I pray and trust that you have a wonderful day in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. Father, thank you, Lord God, for teaching us about helps antilepsis and what that means father anti and opposed pilotage and governments oh god i thank you lord god for those that have heard and those that will continue to hear father i thank you for your faithfulness father your great love father god and how you're teaching us of your ways father god and i bless you father god for your faithfulness lord thank you for all the brothers and sisters that are out there that are represented and i pray lord and trust that they would hear and obey your word father Give them the ear to hear, Father, and eyes to see, Lord, what your spirit is saying to the church in this hour, Father. We bless you and we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. They've lifted up their voice.